<laughs> pretty common record lately. 3-1 off stream, and then Esther gets home, like, before, around my fifth match, and I just dropped to go see her. Um, and then we're 4-1 on the day, so... If anybody's capable of counting that high, can add up the record. Yeah, oh yeah, the original list had the standard. I'm going to have two copies of Tezzeret Agent of Bolas for the grindy matchups. Two copies of a random four mana Planeswalker for the grindy matchups. This card is going to be so good in the grindy matchups. What are the grindy matchups? Uh, exactly blue white control? I guess <laughs> four color Omnath. It's not gonna. It's not gonna win me the game against four color Omnath. Uh, it's actually only only for blue white control. <laughs> I'm gonna shore up those grindy matchups. John Midrange Spike. Tezzeret and Agent Bolas for the Judge Midrange matchup. Very prevalent. Mm. <laughs> My opponent said this will be a matchup I didn't expect. I should have guessed this, but... <laughs> didn't get the Gigantic tech I see. Oh boy, <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Our draw is very good. We're lucky enough to be on the play. You know we've broken it when we play a mirror match two hours into the stream. The new Esper Triumph, Elementals, etc. Do you see an option to build decent Esper Soul Herder Brew? It's a dangerous question to ask me. <laughs> uh. I don't know if you remember the old Esper Ephemera, the Esper Inverter Herder deck, which was. An Aether Vile Soul Herder deck that played Thassa's Oracle and Inverter of Truth. But it was, um, it was that was one of my favorite brews before Modern Horizons 2. We trophied a couple times with it. Uh, I haven't been, unfortunately, all that happy with it as of late. Okay, they hit a Daredevil. We, that, that is a piece that we're still missing. So I'm going to go. There's no main deck removal. We should. We're, we're actually just winning the game next turn. Oh, so yeah. Unless they have. Unless they have Asmo for my manufacturer, or uh, Aether Spell Bomb. We should just be winning the game next turn. We play against Scales, Amulet, Four Color. What else? Um, can't remember. <laughs> So just let them trigger my shredder before I decide to do anything else. Oh, the black red Malak rebirth, and then there is uh, yeah, and then like blue white control. So playing cookbook from the yard, trigger the shredder. Oh my gosh! Just going to do this before they can kill my manufacturer. Oh, they already had... Oh, I totally missed that they had this... Damn it, I missed that they had the other food already in play. Well, big mistake. I think that one treasure might end up costing me a lot. It might actually be fine. I think it's actually going to end up being fine. <laughs> yeah, somehow I beat Blue White Control without Tezzerat. Oh, they have another food up. Okay, please just kill my Shredder. Please just kill my Shredder. Oh, dang it. So now I have to get, like, Aether Spellbomb. Kind of hate that. 
Yeah, I think I'm actually just gonna get the cookbook. Hope to get a little lucky. Because we can go manufacturer. No, I messed up again because I, I actually I discard the daredevil and then they just kill the they just kill the manufacturing response and then I can't I, I thought I thought that I could respond to them killing the manufacturer by getting my treasure token let manufacturer die play time save take an extra turn yeah so if if I had um if I had not messed up that last turn I think we win but now I have I've messed up really bad and they're just gonna untap. Make two more foods. Yeah. Well played opponent. Outplayed me. <sighs> yeah, I've made so many mistakes today, but I mean it's just it's just tough. This is a tricky deck to learn. Let's bring in the bone shards. I have no idea how to sideboard. I think we could probably cut the Shadow Spear. I feel like the games probably don't come down to this very often. I think we want to be pretty in on the combo since there's not a ton of interaction in this matchup. Could probably cut the fourth Shredder and then maybe cut the Springleaf Drum. I think that we the one Nile spell one is fine because it's Tutor Bowl Saga. I don't think you want the Lantern that badly. Needle for Asmo. I mean, the problem with that, right? The problem with Needle is this is a it's a mirror match, right? I have four Asmo in my deck. Needle seems great. I'm I'm kind of surprised everyone wants to bring a Needle because, like, whatever whatever I'm needling is affecting like my own cards as much as theirs. Full made in the play the hit opponent sagas. I think that's like the kind of tech we would learn after like playtesting the matchup a lot. How is Shredder? Shredder is good in every deck it's in. Cards are great. It has a ton of synergy in this deck, too. Great, 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 great in this deck. Close hand. No cigar. I kind of hate this hand. My opponent's also in level 6. I'm going to go to 5. I think this hand's a little better. Definitely needs some help. I think I'm putting back second cookbook, Aether Spellbomb. Notably the Giganta messing with my mana. I'll have to draw an Emery. <laughs> this might be a Giganta game. My fault for messing up game one. Why second cookbook over spell bomb? You have a lot of ways to tutor extra cookbooks. Uh, we don't have a daredevil in our hand either. Spell bomb is also like you know good if you already have the emery going too. Less good otherwise. Fulminator Mage is also like a card. Okay, it looks like my opponent's stumbling a little bit too. <laughs> they like, their draw is pretty similar to mine. As you might expect in a mirror match, I guess. They boarded in Thought Seas, which I'm pretty happy they did. <laughs> they don't have a. Okay. So if they had another land here. I'm trying to think if I want to make a token end of turn. I think no is the answer. I would not hate drawing a daredevil. I do kind of hate that draw. So I can grab, I can just grab the Aether Spell Bomb and bounce, um, and just go bounce their Saga Token, bounce their Saga Token. This seems fine. If they want to chump block, that's fine too. Since we're ahead on board game one and point, did you consider making constructs and try to race for his comboing? Well, I really thought I was going to be able to combo. The fact that they were able to Asmo double activate wasn't something I was expecting to have happen. 
as was probably pretty apparent, and I, I got kind of flustered when they were able to Asmo double activate. But it wasn't like really on my radar that they could. How does the combo go? Um, the, the idea is to make five artifacts a turn for your time sieve. Um, you do that either just by like, a, a lot of times you're just gonna be discarding Oval Chase Daredevils to cookbooks over the course of the game, have a lot of food tokens in play, top deck a time sieve, play it, sacrifice five, take an extra turn. But how you actually go infinite is you have an Academy Manufacturer in the mix, which is gonna let you um, really pump those numbers up. I think I'm killing this in response, because I, I don't want them to get up to five artifacts and just be able to take a second turn. I guess I could... No, I don't want to take an extra turn in response. This is the exact list I played last turn changes. I tweaked a couple cards. I also just now added the Giganta. I tweaked the sideboard a little bit for sure. I think my main deck was pretty much the same. Needle. Naming Time Sieve. I'm kind of surprised they named that because they definitely have... Their Time Sieve is definitely way better than mine right now. Your match deck is the deck that popular. I mean, I tweeted it out this morning. This is uh, I, I do not expect the mirror match to be incredibly popular. No. It is simply I, aspiring Spike, that uh, that am incredibly popular. I think we are losing the mirror match though. Am I excited for double masters too, or do reprints that matter? Um, I mean, reprints do matter. I I have like, I have basically like. Most of my modern collection finished. Like I, 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 there's some cards I need to pick up, but there's like nothing I'm like really, like really super hungry to to pick up from Double Masters too. So, um, yeah. You mean on paper? Uh, I, I mean, I, yeah, whenever I'm talking about collecting, I'm always talking about paper, because I, I don't have, um, I don't maintain a Magic Online collection, I just rent. Do you ever play Tabletop Modern with friends? <laughs> uh, more, I used to more than I do now. Um, that's, that's honestly, though, mostly because my friends don't really play much paper magic anymore. They might have forgot to food token last turn. Uh, you know, most of my friends were like RPTQ, PPTQ grinders back in the day, and I am like kind of the only one still who plays. Oh. Put the standing desk down. Not sure how we really draw out of this. I think it's probably going to involve just me drawing my own Asmo, killing theirs. Do you think Urza Saga is too strong and should be banned? Uh, no. And I've also said that the entire time, but... <laughs> and there's a lot of craziness about Urza Saga being banned at the, uh... Beginning of MH2, huh? But I've, uh, I've never really felt like it's too good. Alright, their own Saga here is pretty bad for me, but I can, um... Kill their Asmo, then bounce my Asmo with Odawara. I really need to find my own Daredevil. All right, it costs one less. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I could have replayed the Asmo. Then, oh, they have their own Odawara. Yikes. Mirror match, baby. Mirror match, baby. Uh, I am going to Dreamhack Dallas, yes. What do you think about cancers taint, in risk with tainted indulgence? I, I, I don't have strong opinions on it. I, I know I probably should have stronger opinions on it than I do because people keep asking me about those decks nonstop. But the reality is, I just, I just do not really feel like 
like what reanimator was missing was another two mana draw to discard one that was not something i i felt like was missing from the equation um i also am kind of the opinion that indulgence is worse than mending and um unmarked grave as an enabler which you know also makes me less excited Thoughts on first Takanuma over fourth Dark Slick. Uh, Takanuma kind of sucks, is usually my impression. It's maybe a bit better in this deck, but... Like, your your Underworld cookbooks are also like Takanumas already. I don't know. Neon Knights for the 12 months, appreciate you. Is this the mirror again? That'd be so funny. Okay, now the mirror. Could Word of Vision have you till in shell? Word is like su surprisingly hard to cast, being triple blue, I think, and your Urza Saga deck. Um, I, I think it's just too high on the the overall mana curve. Like I'm not you could build you could build the card with it in, in the deck. Like you could you could build it in the deck. It'd be fine. But I, I kind of just like having the curve be way lower. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 definitely the case. Reanimator needs like they yeah, they they need like more persists. They need another good reanimation spell, not like a, another two mana draw two discard one. Um, and I don't know. I, I I I know a lot of people are really hyped about it, but I, I just you know I'm not gonna not gonna fake hype on it. <laughs> yeah, it seems like our worst matchup so far is the mirror match. Hey Fran, how's it going? Mog with the 10 months, thank you so much. Thoughts on Hearst and Juno versus cards like Relic Lantern. Do you like it in every sideboard? With main deck, creatures the crew, with Shredder. Uh I wouldn't say in every sideboard. I wanna play I wanna play it over Relic and like specifically Murktide. Um I think it's likely gonna be a good option in Shadow as well. But I think you, you should do it all on a case by case basis. Like in, like this deck right here has Emery, so with Emery being able to recur Nile Spellbomb and Soul Guide Lantern, I think that you want to be playing uh, those cards over Hearse. But Hearse is good. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, obviously the Unearth always makes Thoughtseize pretty awkward, but it's kind of funny how long they t they tanked on this. So yeah, all these cookbooks are definitely good with the time sieve in our hands. Let's actually skip four cookbooks in a time sieve, taking four fifths of a turn every turn, I guess. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, taking Unearth or Asmo is exactly the same, right? It shouldn't actually be any different. Not sure what my opponent's playing. It's like a blue-black control brew. <laughs> Reanimator. It's guarding Punta Delta. You just play? No, you played well. I, I messed up, definitely messed up game two. I got kind of like stunned, not realizing you could double activate Asmo. You played well. So I can get blue mana from Springleaf Drum. Assuming my opponent's on Reanimator, which definitely looks like they are. Although the Hall of the Storm Giants is kind of surprising. The Reanimator. Maybe this is the Waffle list. Yeah, we can also get the Black Saga. I mean, if I draw if I draw a blue source, it's like pretty easy to just get the Black Saga here. Or should I Black Spell Bomb? But like I'm kind of not expecting them to have a counter for my time sieve. It's kind of the thing. Okay. Well, I could also just get fourth cookbook too. Probably best to get that. Let's get, let's get the spell bomb. You can take three turns without any help. Hmm. Okay. Wasn't expecting them to be on counter magic. It's fine.
Yeah, this this doesn't look like Waffo's list. This is a, a brew of some kind. It could just be like blue black control with um. <laughs> it could just be like blue black control, with tainted indulgence. It could, and it could also still be reanimator. Yeah, I, I agree. This probably means Archimedes charm. So top deck time sieve is probably a win. Let's make three more foods. Oh, I was sorry, I was supposed to kill the shredder in response. <laughs> Alright, take your free loot, I am generous. There's our blue mana. I guess I get the loot anyways, actually. If I was gonna play a modern regional PTQ tomorrow, which deck would I pick up? Um, Probably the Shredder Shadow deck. I've been liking that deck a lot. Maybe the Shredder, maybe Shredder Murktide. One of those two. All right. It doesn't look like they're trying to like get enough mana values for this to actually be a draw to. They're also somehow only at eight. I don't think I'm supposed to cash in my spell bomb yet. I think I can chill. Seems like they might have some counter magic up too. Yeah, I think the four two is probably pretty good against the blue black deck. I could also maybe be on like, try to return Emery here. That could be better as well. What's the most fun deck in modern in my opinion? Mm. This deck's pretty fun. Mm, I don't know. Fun is pretty subjective, obviously. I know that's not the question, but everybody enjoys different things about the game. I don't, I don't know what I've been finding the most fun lately. I like I, I personally always have the most fun doing a lot of different stuff. Like like just the the process of trying a lot of different things, that by itself is kind of always my favorite thing. Um Okay, let's let's cash in the spell bomb now. So I, I usually just mostly have fun doing new stuff then. Anything like more specific than that? My thoughts on the Shredder Phoenix deck. Any changes I'd make? I just uh, wrote a guide for for CFB Pro for that um that list that you can uh, check out. Should be should be coming out um today. I I should play. Sorry, I should play my Saga first. If they have removal spell, I can still. I guess I can still. I could just float mana, but I want to be able to um. I want to be able to put my companion in my hand. And then I can actually discard my companion to bring back my sh uh, Daredevil. If I want to, I'm not sure if that's more relevant than just having the 5-5. Five five. Ever do anything with Gear Hulk and Reality Heist? Uh, I, was, I, I was never able to crack the code. It's maybe something I'll return to at some point. They kind of have to bounce the Emery, right? When on Unearth Asmo, Emery can give me back Time Sieve, which is just just is just two mana win the game, as opposed to Asmo, which which just give me an extra cookbook, gives me back my Daredevil. But I mean, if you look at the board carefully, you'll see that that's not really the um, <laughs> the it feels like the goal of this game necessarily. You ever play Grinding Breach? I've uh, play tested a little bit off stream. It's a pretty good deck. <laughs> yeah, this is the Tezzeret Agent of Olas matchup. <laughs> make a token here. I don't want to make a token before my opponent can like. I don't. I don't want them to be able to just minus Jace on the token. 
Um, I'm just gonna make it end of turn, then get to then I get to food three times end of turn. This is game one, so I'm not expecting graveyard hate. It's also blue black, and most of the graveyard hate is like Voidwalker or Leyline. Mingu thinks Ashiok is unplayable. Modern while Reed loves it. My thoughts? I mean, Ashiok is an amazing cyborg card, and cyborg card for Titan specifically. Um, I don't think it's very good outside of that, but like. I played in plenty of decks where I'm looking for a cyborg card for the Titan matchup, which is usually a matchup I respect a lot. So I guess I, I guess I fit somewhere in the middle of their opinions. Need more power. So they're going to let me cast the Time Sieve. I'll make another token as well, I guess. Oh, I should, have t I should not have tapped this. That was a mistake. It's a big mistake. Uh, I'm just gonna attack. If if they're on like Snapcaster Chimp Block, that's fine. I don't think I'm supposed to go for the Shadow Spear. Yeah, I like Shredder a lot in like Historic and Pioneer Phoenix. I don't like it nearly as much in uh, Modern though. TM, think with the five months. Appreciate ya. Okay, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I saw the line. I saw the line. We're taking a bunch of freaking turns. Could bring in Needle against the J stack. It's probably fine not to. I think I'm kind of interested in cutting the Aether Spell Bomb and the Shadow Spear for just two Thoughtseize. Clicking Submit. don't love this hand we could potentially cast asmo on turn three after cycling on earth i think against like a blue black control deck i'll keep definitely could be better no lantern no i don't think my opponent's actually playing reanimator if, if i did think they were playing reanimator i'd bring in the lantern but i think they're just a blue black control player who's like dude i'm gonna play tainted indulgence and i'm never gonna draw two off of it <laughs> so i think for the uh, twitch prime appreciate you so they have their own spell bomb. Seems okay here. I might just take this consider. They have no black mana. You can play around the explosives. Uh, trying to figure out time save combos. Noticing it doesn't sack itself as part of the cost. Yeah, yeah, it does not, surprisingly. And explosives, indulgence, and a couple of mystery cards. I think I'm pretty likely to cycle and unearth end of turn because my opponent's got the. Uh, spell bomb. Thoughts use your own Asmo the Earth. We actually we actually have Thoughts use herself to cast Asmo for for the win today. Or no, we actually lost the game, but it was a good it was the correct line at the time. <laughs> Copium. I didn't bring in the needle, did I? No, I'll bring it in for game three. Yeah, so really happy they missed their third land. Happy we took the consider. Thank you, Sergeant. How are house things? Um, they're going like a bit smoother, I'd say. You know, it's 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 mostly just been tough for for Esther specifically because she has like a, a big project at work that's like finishing this week. She has uh, they are reanimator. <laughs> um, she has finals that are um. Are they playing Urza Saga too? They must be playing Urza Saga with like Needle Spell Bomb. Uh, she has she has finals that are this week in her to finish to, for her last semester of her master's degree, and then also the house stuff. So I, I've been kind of doing everything around the house. It's it's been pretty smooth though. We're just kind of like waiting on like some deliveries, and we're still unpacking. I'm like installing some curtains and 
Um, waiting on like the blinds people to come out, but nothing too crazy. Is Gear Hulk good enough? Not good enough for Pioneer. Uh, I mean, I've played Gear Hulk and Pioneer in the past. I feel like the it's kind of become kind of outpowered. What she's doing? Marketing research. The best instance playing issue with Gear Hulk. Yeah, mag magma opus. Yeah. So I see the Archon definitely gonna get a Nile spell bomb here. I know they've got engineered explosives. Yeah, I guess maybe knowing that they have explosives, it's actually just gonna be better to to shred this turn. Still getting the Nile spell bomb, but gonna go shredder, cookbook. Don't hate that thought seize. I'll discard one of my two Asmos. Oh yeah, I remember when uh, Sublime Epiphany came back. I took my, my I, that was the first like Pioneer League I played in a long, long time. Um, wait, why aren't they playing the explosives? Oh, end of turn dress sounds sure. That was, but that was the first Pioneer League I played in a long, long time, and um, so I unearth the Asmo. I don't get the trigger. Just thought sees them, and I, I I took a break so I could I took a, a break from my hiatus so that I could play uh, Epiphany Gear Hulk Reclamation in Pioneer back when Wilderness Reclamation was legal. Do you have to play Saga in this? Yeah, Saga, Saga is really mandatory here. It's like tutoring up your cookbooks, giving you a good beat down plan B, tutoring up other interaction. It, it really is kind of mandatory, unfortunately. Okay, opponent has no castable spells. Kind of a big draw step for us. Another cookbook. So let me just go cast Unearth on Asmo. See if my opponent is wanting to cash in their spell bomb without getting a card, which would, we would be. Uh, obviously okay with. Okay. That is what they do. Awesome. Let me just go to make two tokens now. Yeah, yeah, Shredder helps you trigger Asmo. This turn, though, we're going to play Manufacturer, Daredevil. Yeah, so the always yes apparently doesn't work because it's a new, it's like a new Daredevil every single time. Oh, wait, can we just win here? Yeah, well, we can just take it for the turns. <laughs> weird game, weird game for sure. Yeah, I think Shredder is definitely the best card out of the set. And it's been really good in this deck. It's really good with Daredevil. We've taken infant turns a lot today. Okay, on the play. Yeah, it does seem kind of up your alley cat. <laughs> it's an unintentional alley cat. Playing against Obosh the Prey Piercer. I'm going to keep this and hope not, get, not to get Blood Moon too bad. We're going to very least make one Saga token before we do, which may be enough against like Mono Red Obosh. Do two Academy Manufacturers make nine tokens? Yes, three of each, and then I believe three, out of, three Manufacturers make 27, so on and so forth. Where the cards required for the infinite turns combo. So it's Underworld Cookbook plus Time Sieve is like are the two most important pieces. And a lot of the times, I've said this a bunch, but a lot of the times you're just going to have a cookbook, have a daredevil, and over the course of your over the course of your match, you're gonna kind of passively um make a lot of food tokens, and then you're just gonna play a time save and take like two extra turns. 
and then use that to either assemble the real infinite turn combo or just win the game with the two extra turns. But the 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 third card to actually make infinite turns is usually Academy Manufacturer, which is um, which is going to let you just make three game objects every time you make a food. Um, and uh, no, the usually usually don't need to have it all at once. Usually you can just like take one extra turn, play a Manufacturer, take a next turn, play a second cookbook, take another, take infinite turns. Why no Urza? Um, I think a big issue a lot of people have with these Asmo decks is they make the curve too high and they make it too dirtily and they're just like, uh, and, and that, that's just like the issue I see a lot of times in this archetype. Uh, here, I think I'm really happy to just be keeping the curve uh, relatively low, keeping the curve relatively low and I'm surprised I didn't dash. And, uh, you know, playing only creatures that get unearthed, too, because unearthed is a big piece of the, the combo. Okay, so I'm probably just discarding both of my sagas. Uh, I don't think I need to do that right now, though. I'm going to discard one saga now. So do I tech? I think I'll tech for, just tech for eight here. We're against the mono red deck. Nine nine lifelink tramples probably too much for them to beat. <laughs> yeah, Aether spell bomb off monkey does appear to be there out. So I guess our best draw is Aether spell bomb, and our second best draw is Oval Chase Daredevil. Or just Shredder to block this, maybe. Obosh into the hand. I'm trying to think if there's anything I could do with like looking at my top card. Let's just not overthink it. They have they have one out. They can hit it. I don't think I there's much to talk about. How good is Were in the deck? A lot of people have been asking about Were. I I think that. Um, this, this is, you know, not a exhaustive statement, but I think for the most part, it is the tendency of deck builders to play more tutors to add consistency, and they overall de they diminish the overall power level of the deck. And in my opinion, triple blue is not that easy for this deck to get. Um, and the card is definitely, like, slower than just casting the cards you draw. You have a lot of tutors for your cookbook already. Having, like, another tutor for cookbook isn't that relevant. I think I think it's just better to have the curve be lower and um and especially with ledger shredder like the fact that you can loot away extra copies of times time sieve makes like the downside of drawing multiple sieves much less yeah I, i'm not saying that it's it like unreasonable to play it i think it, it, it is fine to play like the war version but i think it, i think it makes more sense not to all right i think the main the main way we're losing is probably to Blood Moon, so I'm going to bring in the Thought Seizes, and I probably want some, some number of Bone Shards. Although I've got Asmo for their creatures. Yeah, who cares about Bone Shards? Deck Tech for DJ. So, 60 card Vivian combo with Karn the Great Creator. I'm usually not a huge fan of Karn the Great Creator in... Dude, Giganta's getting us again. I think I'm keeping. Shredder seems really good in this matchup. I'm usually not a huge fan of Karn in like these green Mana Dork decks. I feel like Karn is just like so often so um, slow and disruptible. That being said, I think with Planesbound Accomplice, I, I am actually kind of, in I'm kind of into it. I'm kind of into it. Specifically with Planesbound Accomplice. I might get turn two. I'll probably just concede to turn two moon or take a draw step then concede. Um I don't sure if, I'm not sure if I'm feeling circuit bender. I feel like most of the times where you would want to get circuit bender, you would just oh do turn two pillage. Pretty brutal. I feel like most of the times you'd want to get circuit bender, like bridge is just gonna be better. 
Um, I would I would also like really recommend playing a Chalice of the Void over the Void Mirror since you can like since like spending four mana on Karn lets you immediately play a Chalice. Needing two extra mana to uh, Void Mirror is pretty pretty rough. If I draw an Asthma, we could get out of this. Yeah, so definitely Chalice over the Void Mirror. I would really want a card advantage card to get off Karn, like a, not Circuit Bender. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what there is, like what options you really have. Nothing's immediately springing to mind, but I, I like the idea. I'd really like to find. I, I would also like to see you play Ren and Six too. Actually, I feel like Ren and Six over Ignoble Hierarch makes a lot of sense, and ideally finding room for a third copy. Just hit those hit those land jobs. <laughs> Maze my tome. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Somebody can somebody check and figure it out. Maybe. Life Crusher's Bestiary. I feel like Maze Mind Tome is probably better than that. I'm not sure. Yeah, you could you could play a Sky Sovereign, but um. It, it, it unironically might be Maze Mind Tome. <laughs> Immortal Sun Immortal Sun's pretty bad in like the Planeswalker combo deck, right? Monkey seems nuts in Ponza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monkey's a monkey's a, a bananas actually. I'd say. <laughs> I would I would call Ragavan bananas, not nuts. <laughs> okay, on the play, game three against Mono Red Obosh. Winning game one, very nice. Just where like. I think I think you're gonna see that. Oh wow. Okay, definitely keep this. Yeah, have, having manufacturer cookbook on Earth is like usually the nut draw. I know that we're you know only have one land, but we can go turn one cookbook, discard manufacturer, untap unearth manufacturer, tap cookbook, cast Emery. I mean, you you like you kind of always keep a hand with these four cards specifically. I think. Well, I don't love them potentially having Bolt here. I think I'm just going to wait on tapping the cookbook. I was kind of hoping they would just play Ragavan. They pitch a season pyromancer. Our manufacturer is unfortunately dead. Let's see, what we mill off the Emery. We don't hit a. We don't hit a daredevil. I don't think I need to like just use my treasure and cast the Asmo now because I'm like you know. As I use that treasure, I lose it. Stomp. Maybe they never had the bolt on. Huh? It would have been a bit better against this. Ragavan. Okay, we can kill that with Asmo. Easy enough. Okay, let's 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 shred. Let's play the shredder. Discard cookbook to cookbook. Use the treasure to cast the Asmo. Connive. Not sure how I feel about discarding that. Not that I have, you know, much choice in how to feel. <laughs> the de the deck's going well. Bolt to you. Uh, bolt to you. For Wonder last league, we lost to the mirror match in round one of this league. I'd say that's going pretty well. Oh, they had no cards in their hand. I was kind of confused. <laughs> I was kind of confused why no cards went to the yard there. No need to activate the Asmo yet. Okay. They make a mana. If they cast a spell here, I get to connive. 
They just let the mana go away, and then I untap and I draw a Springleaf Drum. I guess I'm just going to play both of these. And I think I send... I'm going to phone call him. The uh, the AT and T guys want to take up take the internet down for something. They're burying the cable. I I told them no, and then the guy's like, ah, uh, I, I can't do no. And I was like, well, he's like, I have to talk to my manager. So we're getting the manager on the line. Car carrying it up today. Yeah, I know I was on mute. I was on the phone. <laughs> I don't understand. I, I told I told him no. I can't do that. He's like I I, I don't I don't it doesn't work that way. I'm like why doesn't it work that way? I'm paying for the internet. <laughs> I'm paying for the service. Why can't I say no? We can't do that right now. I don't I don't know. I feel like I feel like you know complaining to the manager right now is definitely what happening. But I just don't understand. Why no cycle bobble? I'm, I might discard it to the food token for a food token to kill the Spyro. So here I think I'm conniving it away. Just letting this die. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, uh, I don't know. All right, talking to, talk to the manager. <laughs> okay, uh, they're gonna come by around two p.m. I uh, wonder where they, they they did they did not want to come back later. <laughs> I that was biggest Karen moment ever, but yeah, I don't know. I we won the fight. <laughs> what happened? The the internet guys were out here to to bury my line, and I. And they had to turn off the internet and like you know, like the, 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 that might as well just ends the stream at this point. Um, you know, I'm having a really good stream today. <laughs> I asked them if I could pay a fee to get around this. You know, they, they they the I had to talk to the manager, but they're coming back in a couple hours. Canister, thank you for the raid. Hope you're having a good day. Appreciate you. Playing some blue black Asmo turns today. It's going pretty well. We're four one last league. We lost to the mirror last round. I think we're about to be two and one this league. Caster broke the format. What was Caster playing? Heard you played an interesting deck. Yeah, it's been uh, this one. Yeah, it's been pretty cool today. Yeah, 
Any way we could take six randomly here? I don't really think so. I can gain two. I can gain life if, even if I do. All right, going nuts. I don't have a time sieve in the graveyard, do I? No. Oh boy. <laughs> Guess we're cracking some food or some clues. Just trying to find the time sieve. Connive. There we go. GG. This is what I had. This is what I fought for with AT and T chat. This this is what we fought for. All right. <laughs> Was well worth it. Gloom shout the twenty months. Thanks, buddy. Come back. Appreciate ya. Yeah, but how but how do you win from here? The question. What's up? Your for aspiring fight. Aspiring uh <laughs> I'm gonna play Water Give over Swamp, so if I draw Saga I can go Saga in turn two. Um <laughs> Players want to know, how do you win after you take infinite terms? Modest thank you for the raid, appreciate you, buddy. Oh, uh, we rated. We I follow. I I just I realized yesterday I wasn't following Graham. I guess I'm also not following Modest, which is embarrassing after Modest raids every day <laughs> for a year. But I can fix that now. Middleover Academy Manufacturer and Asmo. Opponents playing Seal of Fire. I wonder if they're playing the. Um, Chandra's Incinerator Burn. <laughs> A classic deck. They are playing Chandra's Incinerator Burn. <laughs> it was it was obvious, chat. It was very simple that that was the that this was the matchup. So I can't. I can't. Um, Kill this this turn, unfortunately. But I think I just have to hope my Asmo survives and then I get to Asmo this next turn. But now my Asmo is not surviving. And neither am I, probably. <laughs> Okay, we go to one. If we draw another Asmo, we can potentially come back, but probably not. Alright, dead. Awesome draw from them. Very cool. I haven't seen the Incinerator Burn deck in a long time. Definitely a really, really cool deck. Gonna bring in the Bone Shards, I suppose. Let's cut the Eighth. Oh, I guess Eighth Spell is good. Now Spell Bomb cut. Probably going down on the time sieves. And then probably probably don't need the fluster storms. We've got a lot of ways to gain life. I think this this matchup's probably really good despite us losing game one. Just like the food tokens are so good against burn. With this deck without Saga. Saga is really, really important to this deck. I, I really don't think you can cut it. There's some saga decks you can cut it from, not really this one. Okay, uh, we'll just keep the turn two Shredder Bobble. Just turned in, how is the MT matchup? The MT matchup. MT, MT these nuts, perhaps. 
Okay, so with the Rift Bolt suspended, I will prioritize getting a counter on the Shredder. Kind of like discarding a second Shredder so I can just unearth it. Mono Green Tron? There, really, is that it? <laughs> Murktide, Murktide. Okay, I've never seen Murktide abbreviated that way. Um, I don't know, I haven't played it yet. It's probably okay. Love to find a uh, Shredder there. Or sorry, a, uh, <laughs> a Oval Chase Daredevil there. So we get to draw two new cards. One of them is the Underworld Cookbook. So I can go Cookbook, get back Daredevil. Discard Daredevil 2 Cookbook. Return Daredevil. Bone Shards. Oh no, I need to unearth the... Oh, hold on. I haven't cast my seconds. I need, I need to cast... I need to unearth the, the Shredder first. So I missed, I missed a Knife. Gonna be okay, I guess. Survive somehow. Bolts the one three. Probably discarding Emery. Not that Emery would be too bad here. I imagine the Shadow Spear just ends the game. Yeah, so as weird as it as weird as it is to not make a token. I think I just want to prioritize hitting my opponent with the Shadow Spear. We also get to go... I guess we don't get to cast two spells. Just back at him. Craven, think of the tier one. Appreciate you, buddy. And then... I think I want to change too much for game three. You can just click resubmit. Again, this this matchup seems really good. Bone Shards is like also like randomly really good against Chandra's Incinerator. Welcome to modern, I guess. Hard to mulligan the turn two Shredder Bobble. Obviously, if my opponent has turn two Incinerator, like they have had every game so far, it's kind of bad for us. Does playing Fulminator mean you can have your Gathering Companion within the board? Yes, which is, I think, fine. Especially because those matchups are like Tron and Titan. But again, Gigantha, it's just it's just free enough to include. Enjoyed the content built on the Lux combo deck you put us a couple days. Hope you revisit some time. I hope I do too. It was it was kind of discouraging to like we had like a fun like 3-2 with the first league there, and then we just ran into like three Fury decks in a row, and uh, it, it is it is definitely the case that Fury decks are such a problem for d devoted druid decks okay asmo's pretty nice card to have access to here uh they have two ripples suspended so we're gonna get to connive again but i need to make sure i get a counter here and i want to crack the bubble now so i have max selection on my conniving they have a mounted on top two rift bolts suspended Probably looting away Watery Grave. Unless I draw Daredevil, I guess. Knive. Alright, flood flooding out a bit. Three cards in my opponent's hand, though, and I'm at 10. Trith, thank you for the nine months, appreciate you. Bolts me down to seven. Passes. Okay. Um, I guess we go second shredder, unearth Emery, connive, connive. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Truth of the Nine, five dead white guys in the seven months. Thank you so much. Welcome back. They didn't bolt the bird. The bird was a 2 4. They would have had to double bolt the bird. So I can next turn Bone Shards my own creature. Okay, interesting, hold on. <laughs> okay, target Mishra's Bobble. Will they sack the Tormod's Crypt in response? 
They will. All right, this is uh, one way to do it, I guess. <laughs> What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. But just gaining some life off the Shredder feels keenly important here. Let's discard the Odawara. Oh, I guess oh, I'm not getting life till next turn. I miscounted my mana. Still fine. Does this have kind of stuff going on? No. The there's a 5-0 list that people that got some buzz lately, which is kind of why I started to rework on the archetype that was playing Cat Oven. But in my opinion, Cat Oven plays not very well. Oh, dude, Smash Smithereens. In my opinion, Cat Oven does not play very well with the Time Sieve combo, where like you're just you're you're constantly sacking. I can't believe we do that. You're constantly sacking. This has been such a roller coaster. I'm going to equip to the Shredder so they can't kill, because this has 4 toughness. You're constantly sacrificing the um, the tokens you're putting into play, so it just like doesn't set you well up for Time Sieve at all. So, I, and obviously it plays okay with Man... Oh, dude, no! It obviously plays okay with Manufacturer, but... Um, uh, you don't need the, the density there. One card in my opponent's hand, I'm at one life. My opponent says GG's, they're definitely killing me. I'm definitely dead right now. This is definitely the GG's, but not for me. Zap. Oh no! <laughs> I thought for I thought for sure. I thought for sure they're about to zap me. <laughs> this is a hard hand. I think I'm supposed to keep, and I think I'm supposed to cycle a bobble here. There's there's already prediction life. There's already prediction life. We did we did at the beginning of this league. Do you think Asmo might just be a better place right now than it was a couple months ago? Um, maybe. I mean, I think the I think that the Asmo decks are hard to build. I think a lot of them are, have been misbuilt historically, to be honest. Fuck. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna play the spell bomb and not the bobble. Where next turn, next turn, if I miss on Lance again, I, can, I at least get to play Emery. But I really, really need to save the bobble to trigger the, the shredder. Um, Oh, Mono Red Obosh again. Gary, think of the 16 months. Oh, Mono Red Obosh with Urza Saga, though. <laughs> Deal. One of the mini Hay Hayashi variants. Is there anything to put yours in here of the three CMC artifact creature? The three CMC artifact creature is one is your combo piece that enables like the whole deck to work. Um, it's it's also like. Like, the unearths are so good in this build. If you play Urza, your unearths become worse. Your mana curve gets higher. You become more disruptible. Um, Doomwake came in and suggested adding uh, adding that, though. But I, I, I think it's uh, incorrect. I could be wrong, though. Gary, again, thank you for the 16 months. Appreciate you. Right, Bolting Emery, it's an L we have to take. I know their hand is Ragavan and a couple of mystery cards. We'll see if they dash the Ragavan. They do dash the Ragavan. Taking five now. There's our coveted second and third lands. Um, I think I'm just playing the Shredder. Other option is to unearth Yasmo, but obviously they just have the um, Urza Saga in play. They get a Pyrate Spell Bomb. And they wisely bolt the Shredder before casting the Ragavan. Probably getting close to give up territory. We'll take a draw step though. If we draw like a cookbook, we could maybe pull back. Maybe they'll brain fart on the Soul Guide Lantern. <laughs> Lucky me. It's not like the game just ends or anything, but this is a start, I think. 
I guess not much reason to do anything right now. Any plans of playing a deck with Shredder and four Kappa Tech Wreckers? I, I don't know what Kappa Tech Wrecker is. So I guess I don't have plans. I feel like uh, Kappa Tech Wrecker sounds like I'm going to be forced to read this card and it's going to be the worst card I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of what I'm expecting. <laughs> One three greed ninja. When it is bad, I feel death touch counter. Combo damage move does because I would do. Okay, I really I really don't understand. Oh, okay, it's a ninja turtle. I got it. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got the joke. It's a ninja turtle in the shredder deck. Very good. Very good. Joke gotten. Under joke understood. Well, we have the pi the Nile spell bomb. They're obviously they're going to use the seal of fire, but this is a lot of resources. And I have a second Asmo. We may actually be able to stabilize. Not sure yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna discard the Daredevil before damage so that if they wanna if they want a Soul Guide Lantern, they their construct is one smaller. Okay. Mission accomplished there, I guess. They might just be able to get Delirium again though. They they already have three types again. Although they actually now have to now they have to exile one of their own cards. That's actually huge. And they're attacking me for six down to five. Oh, dude, their own Emery is actually crazy here. It gives them Delirium. They can replay their Spell Bombs. It's pretty unlucky. This turn, why don't we go Shredder. Discard Watery Grave. Cast Asmo, Connive. I think we need the counter on the Shredder enough that we have to lose the Emery. Is that right? I guess I can block Shredder on Ragavan. Yeah, I can, I can actually discard it here and then I can play the Emery. Over Shadow Spear and two Academy Manufacturers. Oh, to War on the Emery? Well, it's just too man intensive for this turn, right? <laughs> it's not like it's not, well, it's not an option this turn. It's the best build for Vivian Planebound. Uh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really spent time working on it. I know like Spider Space has a few other players. Um, I, I don't know what the best build is. It's probably, was I supposed to kill this already? It probably was actually. It's a really tough game to navigate. All right, let's kill this now so they don't get any knives, and then I guess we can have six. I think Ragavan is healthy for modern. I mean, Ragavan's not a super well-designed card. I do think it encourages games to be more focused on removal and interaction than they have been previously. Usually, though, when people ask me, do you think X or Y, car, X or y card is healthy for a format, it's, it's usually in the context of, I really hate this card, Spike, do you agree with me that this card sucks? Is, is like, is very often <laughs> how I've, I, my experience answering these kinds of questions. Um, uh, I actually recently cut Ragavan from Blue Red Merktide. I'm not sure how correct it is, but I kind of liked the build yesterday. <laughs> Do I think Winona is healthy for Pioneer? No, I want to ban that card, actually. I, I, I think it is pretty beatable, right? Like, I think it I think it is beatable. You can sideboard for it. It has bad matchups. I also think it's pretty unhealthy for the format. Like, that that's actually a card I think actively makes gameplay worse. I think in a lot of ways, Ragavan actually does make gameplay somewhat better. Again, it just kind of, it just kind of encourages the, the, the type of gameplay that I usually like to to have in the format. So I could potentially Aether Spellbomb Emery back to my hand. I 
Yeah, they have a Soul Guide Lantern, so yeah, I think we're just gonna go make a construct. Aether Spell Bomb. Bounce the Emery. Pass. Ragavan feels very similar to Uro. I really disagree. It's like, what was annoying about Uro was like, as soon as one Uro was cast, the rest of the game is about that Uro. Countering it, removing it over and over again, escaping it, getting tons of card advantage. Ragavan just dies, and it's gone forever once it dies. But like, once you cast one Uro, the rest of the game is about that Uro. And I, I, that, that was something I always really disliked about that card. Second Chandler is pretty bad. You are entitled to your opinion, of course. Okay, my opponent's been forgetting about their lanterns. Maybe they'll just let this happen. <laughs> Copium. Okay, I, was re I really, really, really needed to hit a daredevil here, and I didn't, so... Um, we're probably dead. There's a lot more exile based removal now. Sure, I, this is. A, I don't know if this is like an argument for unbanning um, Uro, but like exile based remo removal was never a good way to deal with Uro. Like remo removing an Uro was never a good way to deal with it. Like the best ways to deal with it were like Narset, Reband, like cards that like lined up well against the card draw. If your opponent's removing your Uro, like you're that's you're, that's usually a game you're winning, especially because you often get to gain so much life too. Okay, they're on Saga, so I'm not expecting them to be on Moon, so I'm going to bring in the Bone Shards, not the Thon Seizes this time. Um, I got the Snile Spell Bomb, I think. It was kind of good against the Channelers. I kind of want to bring in Needle, too, against like their Lanterns and stuff. They will have Moon. They're playing Moon, and the, they just slide out their Sagas for Moons. Are we sure about that? How can we be? How can you be sure about anything against this deck? Spell bomb seems useful versus heat. Yeah, you could maybe you could maybe play it. it. It is, I think, still cuttable as well. But there's there's also like the thing too. Like a, a lot of times, like people like to you know play devil's advocate for cards that have been banned. People like to theorize like what what a format would look like if like a row wasn't banned, right? But uh, Uro was, I think Uro led to really bad gameplay, and while I don't think that you should necessarily ban cards just because they're bad gameplay, I think I think that you can ban cards because they're bad gameplay, um, but usually like they do have to be kind of format warping for I, I think it needs to be like really behind a banning. Uh, that being said, uh, taking a card off the ban list because it's not broken it anymore is usually not something I support either. Like, you, you, usually, like, if, if a card is banned and it's, like, a mis- Oh, oh whoops, I messed up, actually. I was supposed to play the Emery first. It's okay, I guess. Um, if, if a card was miserable to play against <laughs> um, and it's on the ban list, I'm not that interested in unbanning it. Uh, Uro was also, like... I think I really hated playing with Uro, too. It was just so, so freaking... So freaking uh, boring to have, like, a... I guess I should have cookbooked in response, actually. But as, as soon as soon as you as soon as you play your Uro, like like you could have like lots of interesting things to do with your mana, right? Like I think I think it was a pretty common situation to be in a spot where you had lots of interesting things to do with your mana, but you could also just escape Uro, so it didn't matter. It didn't matter that you had interesting things to do with your mana. You just have to escape the Uro. Okay, so we did mill over another Daredevil. It's pretty good for us. Nothing to unearth right now. Just play a Saga, attack for three, and pass. Well, Punishing Fire. Yeah, Punishing Fire is also not a card I want unbanned since there's, like, there's already so many cards in the format that punish, like, small creature decks. Adding another one just feels really unnecessary. Same thing for Jitte. Punishing Fire is also probably really annoying to play against online with all, like, the triggers and and all that. Okay, so I think I will not discard um, a card here to get my Daredevil back, since my hand's just probably too good to do that. I can just go make a token, get back my Daredevil. I was like, it doesn't really matter, actually. 
Yeah, I liked Uro a lot in the Gibson Given, the Sultai Gibson Given deck. That was that was a place I really, really enjoyed it. But I, I have good riddance to Uro, good riddance to Luris, good riddance to Oko, good riddance to Mystic Sanctuary, good reason good riddance to Field of the Dead. Um, these are all cards I am like very, very happy they're gone. And like, you know, I think all these cards have a really are really different from Ragavan, where Ragavan is at least pretty easy to interact with. You just you get to one for one. It there are plenty of cards that are great against the, this card, like like uh, there are cards that are good. Uh, you could boil Mystic Sanctuary. You're, there are plenty of like land hate cards that are good against Fields of the Dead. But like at the very least, you don't have to like play these weird, more obscure cards <laughs> in order to combat them. Just like your main deck removal kills the Ragavan. Can I imagine Ridden Six into Uro into Obnath? I don't have to imagine. That was already a reality, a horrible reality. With, with, with Arkham's Astrolabe, too. <laughs> they name Urza Saga. Plays Urza Saga. <laughs> kind of surprised they didn't name Cookbook or, or Asmo. What was worse, Uro or Hogak? I actually, I actually, like... So, well, I will say, like, there was a, a long time where I wasn't, like, super sick of Uro. But, like, at least with Hogak, you don't have to think that hard, you know? You just put four ley line of uh, the void in your sideboards. When you play against Hogak, you just close your eyes, mulligan to ley line of <laughs> ley line of the void. The gameplay is not very interesting. Hogak is a t horribly designed card, but at the very at the very least, it's easy, right? At the very least, it's just it's just kind of easy. <laughs> you, there's there's not that much there's not that many decisions that go into a game uh, that Hogak is involved in. As opposed to the the uh, Urza Saga's needled for all the Twitch chatters out there. As opposed to a game where uh, Uro is involved, where it's a nightmare, you're scrambling to get back on the cards, and it just uh, doesn't matter anyways a lot of the time. To those of you who wanted me to cut the, uh, to cut the Minamo, who's laughing now? me as I draw my extra card. Oh boy, time sieve on top. Four ley line multiple main deck graveyard hit again. Yeah yeah I'm not I, I'm not saying I'm not saying playing four ley line gave you a good matchup. That was not my point. You had a bad matchup even with four ley line in your sideboard. Even with main like if you had main deck graveyard hate and ley line sideboard maybe it was okay. But at the very least, like, you know, you could win games and you didn't have to think that hard. And the games were also pretty short, at least. But with the Uro, the games are really long and kind of miserable. Was well, the Abundant Growth was causing the same issue Astrolabe was? Uh, Astrolabe is a lot better than Abundant Growth. I think it's kind of hard to argue that, but uh, it, it is it is similar. It, it's, it's not, um, they're not super duper different. But Astrolabe, like, letting Icewing have Death Touch turn 2 specifically... Is like I think kind of like and and also being castable off any land besides forest like these are pretty relevant things. Um, Astrolabe is definitely better than Abundant Growth. Anybody hungry? Yeah, also it was yeah also being an artifact is is better than being an enchantment usually, definitely in this case. But none of these decks have anything on on Demir Food. <laughs> Demir Food is the most powerful of all the decks we've discussed today. You're back. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. 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 All right, what a good meme. <laughs> All right, Jigenta. Um, keeping this hand, keeping this hand, and really with like a daredevil. 
Yeah, some people were coming in earlier saying that the deck was, just wants to play three Daredevil because you have Emery. I feel like especially with Shredder, you want four, but being being like being all in on the on the turns combo, being playing four Shredder, I really I really do think you want to play the full four. Yeah, I think I could wait. I don't think if this was Ragavan, maybe I'd bone shards here. We could wait a little bit. Uh, Elegant Evelyn, to give it this prime. We've got a deck tech for Mad Cow Chicken. <laughs> oh, this is actually not a joke. Wait, Lutri doesn't work with Relentless Rats. Okay, it is a joke. <laughs> I couldn't tell. The deck looks really... I, I like. I mean, if you seriously want to surgical extraction your own Relentless Rats, um, and then play a Thassa's Oracle, it's like it's like unironically like not that bad of a plan. It's like not gonna be very competitive, but it does look pretty fun. <laughs> um, I I can't. I, I mean, I, I sure, surely I, I don't know if you just want me to like expand upon the idea, um, or what, but. Definitely looks really fun. Pillage my shores so that I am unable to make a saga token. I think the caverns are pretty important. I agree with that. It's probably better that you should well, you should play Shadowborn Apostle instead of Relentless Rat though, because they're one mana, so you can just go to discard. Way easier to get that in the graveyard. Okay, let me see what my top card is. Unearth. I could draw into that with the spell bomb and then Unearth Ledger Shredder. Is that better than Bone Sharding one of these? I think I think I would rather Bone Shards. And whoops. I think we're discarding Water of the Grave. Fine. That's not fine. I, I kind of needed that to be in the deck. I did cut the Nile spell bomb, right? Yeah. Now I'm losing my losing my Emery. Dang it. So I think I'm getting a cookbook, unearthing Emery and just desperation, hoping to find a daredevil off the Emery. Failed to find it, unfortunately. So I guess now I'm discarding the time sieve as I'm not really gonna be able to neck that game plan, gaining three life. I uh, cannot needle treasure token. When it bolts me, so I'm probably dead. Dang it, feels so bad. It's okay. Overall, still did really well on the day. Close match. Pretty interesting league so far. We're definitely gonna have time to start another league. Hopefully, we can finish the whole thing. I bought as much time as I could with AT and T, but they do they do have to shut my internet off at some point. Maybe we're not dead. Maybe I've given up a little too soon. <laughs> Thank you, Frost. I really don't like Meat Hook Massacre just like as a random standard card here. It's like, when you think about the decks in the metagame, like Meat Hook Massacre is like fine against Winota and Mono Green. It's like really not even like the best card you can play against those decks. It's like usually like not as good as Anger of the Gods would be. But um, it's fine in those matchups, but it's really bad against Phoenix, it's really bad against Lotus Field, it's really bad against Control, it's really bad against Blue-Red Control. Um, it's really bad against Niv. It's, I feel like it's just like a hella dead card and enough matchups that I'm like really, really not into it. Right, I'm just going to pack it down here. 3-2 that league. Going to run it back one more time. That is no meme with the internet. Yeah, yeah, the AT&T guys called earlier saying they had to shut it off for a few minutes to bury my line, and I told them...